good to be back. Hey guys, so it's been so long, or at least it feels like so long since I have sat down and done a video that I almost forget how to even open one. I'm back from possibly the most traumatic, yet beautiful, yet horrible, yet most rewarding three weeks of my life, and whew, has it been a journey. For those of you who are, for whatever reason, not in the loop, I was gone for about three weeks because I had surgery. I had a really huge life-changing surgery, which involved five procedures, all of which related to me being transgender. And when I tell you I am so happy right now, having gone through it and with the results, I really, really mean it. Um, I feel like I have to open by saying that because this video is going to be graphic. It's going to be depressing because I'm chronicling, you know, the healing process and me actually getting the surgery. I feel like when it comes to a lot of the trans advocates and trans YouTubers, not all, but some transition and surgeries that relate to being trans and transitioning are often glamorized, sugarcoated and spoken of in a way that's not really realistic. Basically, my intention is to show you guys the real deal and no sugarcoated bullshit. If you're a pansy, if you are <laughs> agoraphobic, whatever have you, maybe don't watch or you can just, you know, nut up and watch. That'd be great too. And just to give you guys a good little visual of, you know, just how much I've been through in the past three weeks and how bad it was, here's a little picture, but we'll get there. <laughs> so from top to bottom, what I had done is the following. My hairline lowered, my eyebrows raised up a bit. I had a mini eyebrow lift. I also had a brow ridge shaving or reduction. So biological males have a ridge right here that is more prominent. I mean, everyone has a bit of a brow ridge, male or female, but in males, it is a lot more pronounced. And also eyebrows are closer to the eyeball for biological males. So that's why I raised the eyebrows a bit. And then as far as my nose, it was a bit bulky before. It had a hump at the top and it went a little bit low. It was just a little too big and masculine. And so we definitely did slope it out. We pinched it just a little bit and made it smaller. And then finally I had a breast augmentation. And then for my breasts, a lot of people, again, didn't understand why I would get them done. They thought I already had breasts. Let me just tell you, sizable breasts were not what I had. What I had was the world's tightest push-up bra. So I have to say I am extremely happy with all of the results. I would have never in previous videos turned my face this direction. It literally just would have never happened. It was my hugest insecurity, my profile. So the fact that I'm you know, turning my head this way right now really shows that there was a massive difference, A, and B, that it really improved my self-confidence. But I also don't wanna glamorize this shit because these surgeries, even though it's hard to explain, were not done for vanity. They were done to alleviate gender dysphoria. These surgeries were not done for me to feel prettier or more beautiful. They were done to help me just achieve more female proportions, which I didn't really have before in these areas at least. So now let's just hop into the actual journey. I am officially on my way to Dallas, Texas for my surgeries and I'm honestly not in the best headspace right now. I had really horrible dreams last night of my face being disfigured after surgery. I had dreams of people like sneaking into the hospital and like touching my wounds and hurting me. It was really bizarre. Um, you know, it's funny, like I was so excited for this for so long because I've always wanted these surgeries and when you're thinking about getting them, all you really think about is the end result. You think, oh, I'm gonna look so great afterwards. But now that I'm here on my way flying to go get them, you're kind of reminded, oh, you're going to look probably great afterwards, but you're also going to go through hell healing and you're going to be cut open. And I'm just having a lot of morbid thoughts right now. I'm about to board really soon here, so I will start filming again once I'm in Dallas. So needless to say, I was in a really horrible headspace at the airport, which is normal before surgery. Um, I wasn't unsure about getting the surgeries, but I was definitely terrified. Next up is the footage of me in the hotel the night before the surgery. This is like eight hours before the surgery. All right, it is the night before my surgery. I am going in tomorrow morning at nine in the morning and I will be under the knife for two and a half hours. Um, I had my pre-operative appointment this morning with Dr. Peter Raphael. Um, but basically, it was an appointment with the surgeon to discuss exactly what we're doing and the way I want it done, the results that I want, um, and get on the same page. And we are on the same page. And he's an expert at what he does. He deals with trans patients nonstop. He said 70% of the people that he works on are trans, which 
you know, it means a lot to me because that means he knows how to deal with trans bodies and just the little different things that make us a little different. And honestly, I'm really scared. I've never had any type of surgery. I'm a pretty bad hypochondriac. Like, I hate being sick. I hate being out of control of my own body. And also, I keep thinking about my dad. My dad died about four years ago. And I keep thinking about, like, how much easier this might be if, like, I had my dad. My mom is here, which is good. And my boyfriend's flying out two days after my surgery, which is good. But I just can't shake this feeling of, like, wanting my dad. But I need to stop being such a negative Nancy because I know this is the right decision for me. I know this is a decision that's going to improve my life. So I just need to kick my ass into shape. And I'm going to go for a walk right now. And I guess the next time I see you guys, I will be hopefully not crying post-surgery. Looking like I don't even know what. So maybe be prepared for the next little clip. <laughs> Peace. I will give you a second warning. Here's where things get really brutal. Here is me post surgery. Okay, so it is day two. I am currently at the surgeon's office for a little checkup and I'm going to see my boobs for the first time today and hopefully my nose. And my forehead is a lot more swollen. I really didn't ice it as much as I should have. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, check in soon. I am officially unrecognizable. I mean, I don't think any amount of research could have prepared me to see myself like this. My mom is currently cleaning my incision, the one that goes all the way around my scalp. And it's really upsetting because I thought I was on the fast track towards healing because the swelling was not this bad even this morning. And this is just absolutely terrible. The incision for the forehead reconstruction was absolutely gnarly. It ran all the way around my head to behind my ears. And that by far was the worst surgery of it all. My nose job, I don't know why people act like nose jobs are all that bad. I honestly felt no pain, although I was on some kick-ass painkillers. I looked like I had been hit by a truck. I looked like I was imploding. <laughs> and as far as the breast augmentation goes, it was pretty awful as well. Not only did it limit my mobility, I couldn't lift my arms really at all for a week. It felt like an elephant had sat on my chest. It felt like someone had taken a sledgehammer and just hit me as hard as they could in the chest. It was, it was bad too. Luckily, my mother and Joey flew with me to take care of me. I don't understand how anyone can go through this without having someone there to help them. It was extremely intense. But having said that, the painkillers were so strong that I actually don't remember much of being in Texas. What I do remember is just horrible, horrible suffering, <laughs> which sounds so dark, but I'm being honest here. I mean, it was the worst thing that ever happened to me. So it's flash forward to day seven, which was the day I flew out and the day I had to get my 40 staples taken out of my head. So after I left Texas, the next two weeks were spent back at home in California, just hiding from the world. Like, honestly, post-surgery depression is like the worst thing in the world. You think the worst things during post-surgery depression, you think that you made a huge mistake. You think that, you know, you spent all this money and you fucked up. And uh, I don't feel that way now. You guys know I'm sure you can just tell I am happy right now. This is probably the best day I've had so far because this is the first time I've been able to film a video. So yeah, I guess that is all I have to say other than um, some really big thank yous to my mother for coming with me to Texas and taking care of me, to Joey for coming to Texas and taking care of me. I want to thank my surgeon for the superb work and all the ladies at the American Institute of Plastic Surgery in Plano, Texas. And also to you guys because the past three weeks, like I said, have been so hard. There were no words to describe, honestly, how hard it was. But being able to log on to Twitter or open Snapchat or open Instagram 
and open YouTube comments and see all of you guys being so supportive and saying that you wished me well and saying that you wanted me back. It really made everything a lot easier and it was a great way to escape the pain and depression and so I really fucking love you guys for that. So other than all that, I guess the only thing left to say is I'm back and I will see you guys in the next video.